Scorpio Tanker did a 1 for 10 reverse stock split last year. Let's try to figure out whether the stock is a buy or a sell by looking at their financial statements. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Scorpio Tanker stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Scorpio Tankers is an oil and gas midstream company. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. This is a small company, 643 million market cap. They're trading at 1094 a share. And to get shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding 59 million. Let's look at their financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if a company has positive free cash flow, it makes it easier for them to pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other businesses, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things. And this company has positive free cash flow in three of the four years. They have a big negative in 2017. We'll look at the financials later to figure that out. The net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they have negative net income every year, so that doesn't look good. Their revenue looks pretty good. It grows for the most part each year. It goes from 523 million up to 704 million. So they are doing a good job growing their business. Let's look at the financial statements to figure out why they have so many negatives. So this is the income statement. The top line is the revenue. In 2019, it was 704 million. Cost of revenue is the cost involved in order to generate the revenue. That's 512 million. Gross profit is the difference between those two numbers, that's 192 million. Then they have operating expenses, which are expenses that are not directly related to making the product or delivering the service, that's 62 million. And then operating income is the difference between gross profit and operating expense, that's 129 million. So you can see they have 176 million of interest they pay in their debt, which is more than the operating income. That's why they have negative net income every year. They do have more expenses in the other category. Because companies generate money or lose money outside of their day-to-day -day operations. Sometimes companies gain or lose money when they sell assets or through investments. Let's look at a statement of cash flows. Operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's health than net income because net income has a lot of non-cash items. So you can see they were operating profitably according to their cash flow statement. Now to calculate free cash flow, it's cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have a negative in 2017. It looks like they invested the most that year in CapEx, 264 million. The reason operating cash flow is higher than net income is mainly because of depreciation. Depreciation is an expense on the income statement, so it brings down your net income, but it's a non-cash item. So you have to add it back on a statement of cash flows. Let's look at a capital structure, 1.2 billion of debt, 2 billion of equity, and they have a really high interest rate on a debt, 14.39%. And they don't pay taxes because they're a master limited partnership. The weight of debt is 38%, which means they have 62% equity. The cost of equity is 9.16%. And to calculate cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a really low beta, 0.89, so the stock moves less than the market. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity. And their WAC is 11.17%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 204 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $228 million. We divide that by 59 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of three dollars and 87 cents they're trading at 1094 so they're trading at a 182 percent premium it's a strong sell according to the model simply wall street values them at almost 55 dollars so they're saying the stock is a really strong buy 
totally in a different direction than me. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. According to this chart, it looks like they were trading almost $90, but that's due to the reverse stock split, the one to 10 reverse stock split. Reverse stock splits make it really hard to read these charts, so the numbers were never this high. But right now, they're currently trading at about $11. Let's look at the historical dividends. Back in 2016, they were paying a buck 25 dividend, but they cut it dramatically to 10 cents, so they're really trying to conserve cash. The dividend yield isn't terrible, but it's pretty low relative to the risk you're taking. They have a 3.7% dividend yield. To calculate dividend yield, it's annual dividend payment over stock price. So as a stock price comes down, the dividend yield goes up. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a negative PE, the median for the market is 15.5, the average is 17.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have a negative PE because they have negative net income. They have a good price to sales ratio, the median is 2.0, the average is 4.6. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 0.9, so investors are paying 90 cents for $1 revenue. They have a really good price to book ratio. The median is 2.3, the average is 4.8. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 0.3, so investors are paying 30 cents for $1 of book value. They have a weak interest coverage ratio. The median is 3.9, the average is 12.7. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they cannot cover their interest payments, which means they may need to take on more debt. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes, also called operating income on the income statement. ROE is negative. The median is 12%, the average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is weak as well. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables that are due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. The best way to look at ratios to compare them is similar companies. I've done videos on 40 oil and gas midstream companies and Scorpio's right here. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse in PE since PE is negative. They are much better in price to sales and price to book than average. A lot worse in current ratio. They have negative ROE, so they're worse. They're much lower in debt than the average. They do have a lower market cap than average and the dividend yield is a lot lower than the average. To summarize, I have them trading at a 182% premium. Their ratios and their financials look a bit weak. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can click the link in the description below. Every month, I will provide my members with an Excel file to better help them analyze companies. Thanks for watching.